going to make some object-oriented programming. Uh, we're going to enable some of that in our Lua stuff. So the first thing I want to do is when we require a Lua function, this is usually how you see it uh, done, I'm going to make a, an, an empty table. I'm going to call this table class, and we're going to just initialize an empty table like that. And then at the end of this file, I want to return that to whatever it is that's requiring me. So that way that uh, the thing that's requiring me will get an instant or will get this class table. And the next thing I want to do is set a meta method on this class. I want to set the index meta method on this class table to point to itself. Interesting, yes? Well, what does the index meta method do? Well, if you look down here, it is it lets you run a custom function or use a fallback table if a key and a table doesn't exist. So that's what we're doing. So we're taking, we're setting up this class table and we're setting the index key to point back to itself. So uh, we're going to put methods inside of this class. And this is kind of the simplest way, I would say, to achieve or object oriented programming. Um, so that's what this does. And, you know, you can, again, look up for, look, look up some information and, and tutorials and whatnot if you want any more information than that. And the other thing I wanted, we want to do is I want a function that we'll, have, we'll be able to override this function, but we'll call it the new function. And this is just what I'd call a default implementation because all class types, you want to be able to new them up. And that's what that's going to do. <clears throat> and then there, I want to, there's another function that I want to have, and that is a function where I can get the type of the class. And really all that's going to do is return, and self is just a way of saying, uh, self is a way of referring to the current instance of this, that class or or table, if you will, which is what we, where we are right now. We're actually using tables, so which is what Lua is all about, tables. So we're going to return self.type, and that's just going to be a string. We're going to make that a string. So that's part of the basic functionality that we want. And we want to be able to derive a class from this what I would call base class. So we want to be able to create a new class type from our base class, let's say. So let's call a, make a function, and again, we're going to put it in the class table. That's what we're doing here. So the class, either colon, and we're going to say derive. And then I'm going to, I want to know what the type of that we're, uh, what, what's the type of the function that we're going to derive. So it's just a name. We want a name of what this new class is going to be. So in that, we want to create <clears throat> another local uh, table. We're going to call that class. And we're going to say, we're going to put, uh, let's actually make it, in, we'll, we'll make it more clear. So we're going to put empty table, and we're going to set the class type equal to type just like that. And then we're also, in addition, just like we did with the big class, the base class, we set its index to itself. We're going to do the same thing here, just like that. And we are going to do one thing additional, and that is we're going to set a variable, and we'll call it, you could call it base, some, some, some languages call it base, some languages call it super, uh, but it's basically the class that th that this new class was derived from. So we're going to do that. So we'll set that to self, which again is the current instance of this class. And then we're going to do one more thing, and that is we're going to set the meta table for this new class to be the current one. And that will, <coughs> what that basically enables our inheritance. Our, our inheritance from one class to another. So when we set the meta table of this class to be our whatever our class that we're deriving from, that means any methods uh, that are not found in this 
class that we're deriving, uh, Lua will go and look into the into the meta table into the uh, table that's set as the meta table. So that's cool because that's what we want. So we want to return now. We want to return that as a new class type. Okay. Now, for the new class type, we need to be able to instantiate it or make a new object of that class type. So that once again necessitates another uh, meta method because basically what we want to do is when we return this like uh, here let's just do a little example so if I want to make a new class and I want to call it pl the player class okay we could do class uh, derive oops derive and we'll call it player and then now we have a so it calls this function sets the meta table and returns the class now if we want to make a new instance of that of a player that we want player one then we we want to be able to go player and then whatever um, you know parameters that we have there or that we want or basically we want to be able to treat that table as if it were a function so there is another meta method that lets you do that and that is the underscore underscore call meta method okay so we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna use that and additionally there is an another nice an interesting little feature which is we want it to take just a variable number of arguments and to do that we can just use three dots or a set of ellipses so now what we want to do is we want to say we want to say we want to actually create an instance of this class so I'm going to call it inst so it's an instance and we're just going to say set meta table because it will return the table back we're just going to set an empty table and we're going to set the meta table of that to self and once again remember self refers to the current uh, the current um, the current table that it that this is being called from it's actually an invisible parameter and, and it's it's nice because you don't because it's because of this little colon here again that's additional reading left to you um, and then we what we want to do is we want to call on this instance we want to call the new function if there is one and if there's not remember this meta table if there's not one here then it goes down into self and calls this new function which doesn't do anything so in either case we can call it but we also want to call it with any parameters that we have had passed to us here as uh, as, as you know we just want to call them that way and then all we need to do then after that is return that instance okay so that now allows us to do this and if we if we ran this we would have An error. Set meta table. Oh, I didn't spell it right. Meta table. There we are. And see, it runs. That's cool. Remember, this is test code right here. <clears throat> so, if we wanted to make a class, an actual class, we'll end up doing this. And then, if we want to if we want to make a new function for the class so we want whenever you make an instance of this class we want it to uh, we want to pass in some variables or some parameters then we can say function player new and we can say maybe let's say player name okay so this this is going to belong to the player class and new and notice that now when we say player here are this is going to go down into it's going to it's going to look for you know it says hey you're trying to treat this table as a function uh okay then i need to look for a underscore underscore call method on the player table doesn't find one but our meta table is set to the the our base class if you will and that one does have a call meta method so it gets into here and it creates a new instance and it sets that meta table to self which is this table and then it calls new on 
the, whatever the, the the new instance and that new is going to pass down through the chain until it comes to this and if of course we didn't have this it just comes to this one and we can prove that by saying print new from base and you'll be able to see down here new from base see all we did was create a player and that call triggered this new but now whenever we make our own function in our own player table hello name now when we run it we'll see something completely different and it's not that okay so what have I done what have I what have I done have I done something wrong let me check um call if we're calling it correctly and we said player function player new test oh yes of course we don't have anything we're not passing it uh, it says my name is uh, there we are and then we can call it and you see hello Neelix which means that it's calling this new instead of the new that's down at the base class implementation um, so we can get rid of all this stuff and so then whenever we want to encapsulate something we're just going to do we're going to derive stuff from class and then if we want to make something and we want to derive stuff from that then we can just do the same thing we just call the class name of that thing do derive and then we'll just make a new type so the next thing is that we're going to let's see do we have yes we're, we're going to go ahead and do it we're gonna we're gonna make another new file and we're gonna call it we're gonna call it uh, sprite dot Lua and that's where we're gonna make our sprite so what we want is local class and we need to require that class that uh, class dot Lua so now we can now create our local sprite and that's gonna be class um, you know what did we say was it uh, derive derive uh, right just like that and as we know when we're doing modules and whatnot we want to return that actual table because that's what we're doing and we also want a we want to do not like that function and we want it in the sprite table and we want to use that syntactic sugar and we want new and we'll put some parameters in there in just a few moments but we'll also want a right uh, uh, update and delta time and we'll want a sprite dot draw or sprite draw method also so we'll need those as well when we begin to flesh out these items i'm gonna make this larger and going to get rid of that and we're going to come over here with the main check it out what we did before and just to remind you what we did before we will run it and uh, i actually uh, changed the background to blue on this so it's kind of easier to see the sprite and how did i do that well i said this particular is a simple function it's love.graphics.clear red green blue and then you can also put the alpha component in there if you want to so it's basically mostly blue a little bit of red a little bit of green from from one to two or from zero to 255 is what the parameters are there so got a little guy and he is animating so what do we need for this sprite well let's think about it I'm going to close this for a minute. <clears throat> what we need is we need to know what types of animations that he's going to have. So we need this kind of stuff. But really, so he really needs a list of these animations. And we need something like function right not serpent serpent right 
say play and then animation or let's say let's say animate animate and animation name so we need he needs something like this <clears throat> so and and then in addition he's going to need a table we're going to make a new table it's called animations animations it's going to be a blank table and it's going to store our animations but these are our animation parameters and this is how we do the animation this is how we draw it so we're going to need another class let's call it let's just let's hmm. let's just call it animate animation animation dot lua and we're gonna we're gonna want this because we're gonna want to require that and then we're gonna go local and I'm gonna go short do shortened version there class dot derive and we're gonna call it animation and we're gonna return anim the anim table and Oops. And we're going to say function, function, anim, new. Okay, let's bring this over here. We need to know, we want, I'm trying to think about how we want to uh, organize this. Because really what we want, this is one particular animation. So we want self dot frames per second right and we're also gonna need a self dot let's just call it timer and we're gonna need a self dot frame to be the current frame we're on and we need a self dot number of frames right and we need oops not local we need a self dot x offset and we're gonna need a self dot y offset we really are we're gonna need all of that stuff and on top of that we're gonna need size actually let's do this let's call it width and let's call it height Hmm. You know what we should do? I'm seeing a pattern here. X and Y offset. A width and a height, or a size in other words. And we're something else we're gonna need here eventually is we're gonna need another class, and we're gonna need a class that's gonna deal with vectors. So we're gonna make another class called Vector2. Vector2. Vector2 is gonna involve X and Y components of a vector. So, might as well start that one up too. We are just, we're just, we are going all out here today. I don't know that we're going to see any results necessarily because we're getting close to that time where we need to stop. It's okay. We're okay right now. We're okay. We want to make a vector 2. Let's vec 2. That's a new, and we want to say x, comma y. And what we'll do is we will say self dot x equals x or zero and that's going to say if x is any positive or quote true value it's going to put self dot x and make it x otherwise it's going to be zero so if x is not defined or if it's zero it's going to be zero so if x is nil or hasn't been specified it will be zero so that's nice because that means we can just do an empty vector if we want to we're going to do the same thing for y and later on we'll come back in here We'll do other vector functions, functions, such as all sorts of things. So now we have a vector2 class. What we need to do is we want to local vector2 equals require require or two so now and I'm in the wrong place aren't I I don't care about sprites I want this in the animation so we do that so we're gonna do it self 
uh, we're going to say offset offset equals vector 2 for now it's going to be 0 nothing and we're going to do self dot size equals vector 2 and we'll fill those in in just a few moments ladies and gentlemen we'll fill them in in a few moments as a matter of fact it may be that we just we just pass in vector 2s here not sure yet so <clears throat> frames per second so what should come first well let's think one thing that we can do is we do know that we want to do this is going to be 1 over self.fps and we also are going to want a function animation.update delta time and really we can take let's bring this over here we, what we can do is we can take this stuff right here and we can uh, pretty much grab all that stuff and just copy it mostly let's do self dot timer uh, equals self dot timer so we're gonna we're gonna just kind of you know copy that other stuff over and change some of the variable the variable stuff the variable names really self dot timer if it's less than zero less than or equal to zero then and we'll go ahead and put our end I like to go ahead and get that over with so I don't miss it then our self dot timer equals one over self dot FPS um, and then frame self dot frame self dot frame equals self dot frame plus one for here I think it's gonna be that difficult if self dot frame is greater than self dot number of frames then self dot frame equals one and end maybe we should just put it all on its own line like that makes me feel better and we'll say self dot offset dot x equals self this is going to be different self dot uh, size dot x times frame all right <clears throat> that looks okay what we're going to end up having to do is you're all we're also going to have to tell it how many columns there are from its x offset so it can know when to start over so if you have a um i'll drag him over here if we have if we say if we want to start an animation well i mean you know if we want an animation we want to start it here and we got one two three four five and say we want to come down here to keep going we're gonna need we're gonna need to know how many columns are in this particular animation so that when we get to the end we can start over with our X offset and increase our Y offset so we're gonna to need to know that later but for now we're gonna keep it just like this um, this video is running rather long so I'm gonna keep it I'm gonna cut it right here and we'll come back the next one and we'll finish some of this stuff up and until next time we'll see you later